One major thing that I've learned is that apart from the Bible, the most important thing that a Christian should really put work in is personal development. And I have 10 secrets on personal development that you must know in order to become all that God has for you. Now, the first thing that I want us to understand is that you are the average of the circle of people that you spend the most time with. And what I mean by that is that the circle of people that you have is very, very likely that you all think the same and that's why you're together and that's why you're friends. The book of Proverbs chapter 13 verses 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffer harm. So the Bible is saying, this is ancient wisdom here from the wisest man who has ever lived on the face of the earth. He says that if you walk with wise people, you become wise. But if you walk with the foolish, in a sense, you'll become foolish. So the crowd or the circle of people that you walk around with, that is the average of exactly what you are. So some of you want to be rich, but you're thinking to yourself, why am I not rich? But look at the people around you. Are the people around you people who have money? Are they people who have good ideas? Are they people who, who think outside of the box? Are they people who are go-getters? Or are they people who play the victim all the time? Are they people who say that, oh, I don't have this, I don't have this? Instead of the abundance mentality, they have a poverty mentality. If those are the people that you're around, it's very highly likely that that is why you're in the position that you're in today. So if you want to be great, be around great people. If you want to be little, be around little people. Now, number two, work harder on yourself than you work on your job. Now, the scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15, it says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Of course, this is a pastoral epistle that Timothy was or, or Paul was writing. But uh, what it's it, in its essence, what it's trying to say is that be somebody who works harder on yourself, meaning that there is personal development that is continually happening on the inside of you. Let your life be some let your life be a life of growth. Don't just remain in one place and 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 be complaining that man i don't know much or when they ask you can you do this no i don't know how to do it okay figure out how to do it be somebody who is always on the move who is somebody who's always on the grind somebody who is always learning be an approved worker be an approved um, person in in various aspects of life see one thing that we see is that especially for christians and i'm not even just christians people just in general People work so hard at their job, do 12 hours, 15 hours, 16 hour jobs. When they come home, they don't, they don't have time to work on themselves. They don't have time to read. They don't have time to exercise. They don't have time to build capacity. They don't have time to, to, to grow themselves to the place that they want to be. But they always complain and say, man, I'm so miserable. Man, I'm this, man, I'm that. Are you putting work in on yourself? Are you reading books? See, if you want to be, if you want to be uh, rich, are you reading books on personal finance? Are you reading books on investment? If you want to have a good marriage, are you reading books on marriage? Are you listening to podcasts? Are you listening to sermons? Are you growing yourself in the areas that you want to grow in? Or are you working so hard on your job that you think that that's all? Are you working so hard on your job? Listen, I want to tell you something. You know, the people, who, especially if you're working for someone, you're adding more value to them than adding value to yourself. If you're working so hard for somebody to get a promotion in their business, now, even when they promote you, they will still always be ahead of you. But now when you work on yourself, you can end up being someone that hires people. You can end up being someone that adds value. You can end up being someone that creates new things. You ought to work harder on yourself than you work on your job. Because the greatest investment that you can ever make is in yourself. 
Now, number three, discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. Now, Proverbs chapter 12, verses 1 says, Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. That's deep. See, anyone you know in this life that's successful was always a person of discipline. They were always somebody who would do the hard things even if they didn't want to. Now, when we look at the definition of, of discipline, I'm, I'm not speaking from the dictionary um, verbatim, but I'm speaking on discipline in general. Discipline is doing hard things um, that you have to do even if you don't want to do them. So anyone who's successful always has a pattern of discipline. Now, if you want to be successful, you must make sure that you are a disciplined person, that you do the hard things even when you don't feel like doing them. See, when we look at um, anyone who is successful just in general, even the people who seem irresponsible, for some odd reason, you would see patterns of discipline in their lives. For instance, I was, I was saying that there's a young man who goes by the name of MBA Young Boy, right? And, and he's, you know, he's a bit rough around the edges or whatever, but everyone has their own <laughs> you know, situations. Now, this man, he's always in jail. He's always in trouble. He's always here. He's always there. But he is at the height that he's at. Because of the discipline that he has in making music, he probably has about a thousand, a thousand songs. Last time I, I said it, sound, it looked like he had like 300 um, singles, th- like he has thousands of songs, right? The discipline is there and that's what contributes to his success. Anyone who wants to be successful must be disciplined and discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. Now, number four, don't wish Things in life would be easier, but rather wish you would be better. Don't wish that things are easier, but rather wish that you would be better. You know, there's a famous scripture that we all know in in Philippians chapter 4, verses 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, one thing I tell every believer that I come into an encounter with is that don't ask God to take away the problem. Don't ask God to take away the fire, but rather give us strength that we should get through the fire. Give us strength so we can overcome the issue that we face. Why? Because we can do all things through Christ who has strengthened us. We must stop looking at how difficult the problem is or how difficult the pain is and look at how strong God is and how he can help us get through the fire. Don't wish things were easier. Wish you were better. Make yourself better through the word of God. Make yourself better through reading. Make yourself better through developing yourself and building yourself up to become great. Now for number five, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. See the book of Galatians chapter six, verses nine, it tells us, don't be wary in doing good. Why? Because the little good that you do uh, has a big effect later on it's not about the doing one big thing that's great but every single day do a little good do a little good and you're going to realize that it's going to compile and become something great the same way if someone wants to change their life change their body by exercising they don't just go to the gym for seven hours in one day and say oh yeah look at me now i'm i'm muscular i'm these no They go to the gym consistently every single day. If it's 45 minutes to an hour, they put in that work consistently because consistency is what shows or what brings results that we're looking for. So it is the little things and the little disciplines that we do every single day that brings the success that we are looking for. Now, number six. If you don't design your own life, chances are that you will fall into somebody else's plan. If you don't design your own life, there are very high chances that you will fall into somebody else's plan. Now, what am I talking about? If you don't choose to make a plan for your life and make a plan for what you want to happen in your life, there's a high chance that somebody else who has a plan 
will put you into their plan. And now when you get into their plan and when you get into their uh, agenda, it's going to be very hard to come out because you're going to feel very comfortable and you're going to feel stuck in their plan because what they offer you is something that you don't have at the moment. For instance, let me give you an example. If you are uh, uh, an amazing graphic designer, a video editor, right? Now, somebody sees your skill and they say, you know what? I'm going to give you $80,000 a year for you to edit my videos uh, every day. Now, if you decided to run your own business and do the very same thing that you're getting paid for at the person's company, you probably make $300,000, $400,000 a year. It's very, very possible and very, very likely. But because you didn't have a plan for your own life, somebody took you and put you in their plan to make their plan work. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that have a plan for your life. Have goals that you want to achieve. Do something. Don't just wing it and then think that everything is going to fall into place. It's not going to happen like that. Because if you don't have a plan, somebody who has a plan will pull you into their plan and make things work for them. Now, number seven, for things to change in life, you have to change. For things to change in life, you have to change. The book of Romans chapter 12 verses 2, one of my favorite scriptures, it says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Every day, there must be transformation happening in your mind according to the word of God. And this is what leads to lasting personal growth. The more you renew your mind with good things, powerful things, strong things, holy things, pure things, you'll realize that you change for the better. Now, for circumstances to change, you have to change. Funny enough, I was talking to my wife the other day. And I, we were talking about how I made a joke. I'm like, if you, if I was still the person that you married eight years ago, you would have, you would be in a big problem. And if, if you were the same person that I married eight years ago, there would be a problem. You know, some people like to say, nah, I'm never going to change. I'm going to be the same every day, whatever, whatever. Right. There's a, there's a famous song from Jay-Z. I never change. This is whole every day, whatever. Right. Now, we, we, we like how that sounds because it makes you sound real. It makes you sound like you, you didn't change up on anybody. But let me tell you something. If you don't change, you're going to be in the same circumstance for the rest of your life. If you don't change for the better, you will be in the same circumstances. For instance, if I was still the same person that my wife married eight years ago, she would have an immature, she would have a hot-headed, she would have a confused young husband. I'm not, I'm not the same that I was eight years ago. I'm very mature now. I, I, I think that I'm wiser. I think that I'm better, right? You, for things to change, for the marriage to change, I had to change. For the marriage to become better, I had to become better. And that happens by renewing your mind every day on things that may help you and things that may make you better. Now, number eight. Take full responsibility for your life. Look, Galatians chapter 6 verses 5, the Bible says, For each one should carry their own load. In this life, take responsibility for your life. Everything that happens, don't play this victim mentality. Let me tell you something. I, I, I don't know what culture you come from, but I come from, a, I come from, I love, I love my culture. I love my people. But one thing that I, I, I dislike is that there's this victim mentality, man, our government, man, our people, man, my family, man, this, that, that. Listen, take responsibility for your life. You can become whatever you want to become. You can make whatever you want to make. You can do whatever you want to do. Stop blaming other people. The Bible tells us specifically, everyone should carry their own load. Carry your own responsibilities. Carry your life in your hands. Because ultimately, of course, apart from God, your destiny is in your own hands. Whatever you want to make of the life that God has given to you, that's what it will be. If you choose to say that I'm going to be, uh, I'm just going to beg 
all the days of my life. I'm going to cry until somebody gives me one big break, one big opportunity. Then I, I, I don't know when that will ever happen. But if you say, no matter what, I'm going to make something happen in my life. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to push the limits. I'm going to, to grind. I'm going to make sure I make opportunities for myself. You're going to realize that things change for you and things actually work for you. Be somebody who takes full responsibility for your own life. This is how you make it. This is how you will become successful. Now, number nine, learn to be thankful for what you have while pursuing what you want. Now, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So you may want more. You may be looking forward to having more in life, but show gratitude. And be thankful to God for what you do have. Because let me tell you something. Some people may not understand this, but it's gratitude that brings altitude. It is your thanksgiving that gives you more opportunities. It is your thanksgiving that gives you altitude. It is your thanksgiving that lifts you up and brings you elevation. I'm telling you this. Some people don't know this secret. This is a, it's a spiritual secret. But your, when your praises go up, this is that, that's what the song is saying. When your praises go up, the blessings come down. When the gratitude go up, then thanksgiving to God goes up. This is where the blessings come down. So if you want to move forward in life and want to see some powerful things happening in your life, let the praises go up. Be thankful for what you have, even still pursuing what you want in this life. Cultivate an attitude of gratitude. And that is where you will see altitude in your life. Now, number 10, last one here. Success is doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. If you want to be successful, do the ordinary things, but just do them extremely well. Do them to the best of your ability. In the book of Colossians chapter 3, verses 23, the Bible says, whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart as you are working for the Lord and not working for man. See, this is where, this is where believers mess up a little bit. Because when we're doing tasks, when we're doing things, we think that we're doing it only for man. We're doing it to impress man. But the Bible says that when you're doing something, do it as if you are doing it onto the Lord. Do it as if you are doing it onto God. See, one thing that I've learned from my brothers and sisters who are Jewish, they say that the businesses that they do, they're serving God. When you're serving people, you are serving God. And that's why they have all the wealth that they have. That's why they have the success that they have because everything that they do, they look at it as worship to God. And this is what I want to bring to you guys today. If you want to be successful in this life, these 10 lessons from personal development, uh, also from the scripture, is what you need to walk, work with and walk in if you want to make it to the next stage in life. God bless you. Please don't forget to like. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe because more of these will be coming. And I pray that this would bless you in many ways.